In 2016, we have a large number of mutations that we test routinely in lung cancer, most of which are actionable, meaning that we can uh, use a defined drug. When I see patients in my clinic with non-small cell lung cancer, I'd like every one of them to have an EGFR mutation test, a test for an ALK rearrangement, and a test for ROS1. Um, other tests that are routinely done uh, are for RET, um, BRAF now. We do test KRAS, uh, although that's mostly for, for protocol. The actual mutations would be, of course, EGFR and ALK uh, and ROS1, for which we have drugs, and we use them. Now the data are beginning to emerge for BRAF, and in the small percentage of patients with lung cancer, 3 to 4 percent that have BRAF, usually V600E, uh, those patients are usually treated with trametinib or, uh, based on more recent data recently published, uh, trametinib with uh, rafamib. Um, so um, it's exciting, you know, and of course the other thing that's now come out is to test for PDL1. Um, you know, a little bit different than the mutation testing, but knowing a PDL1 status, 25% uh, uh, of the patients uh, will be high, and in that group, they're candidates for pembrolizumab right now in the frontline setting. So in my clinic at Yale, uh, you know, at the uh, cancer center, Smile Cancer Hospital, we're routinely, as a reflex, having patients get EGFR, ALK, ROS1, and PDL1. And then as part of the testing that we do, we do a next-gen panel, so we're getting, you know, another 100 genes for the ride. We are getting KRAS, and we're getting a whole host of other mutations. Uh, those are still mostly for research purposes, or uh, for when we send the patients down to our early phase drug development group, because there, there might be trials for specific uh, genetic abnormalities. Now, one thing that's, of course, very exciting is the lung map trial. And I'm one of the leading investigators in that trial. What lung map is, is that's a trial where we take patients with squamous lung cancer, we put them through a foundation medicine uh, panel, and we're looking at four or five different marker groups, and then we have arms of that trial that match with those. For example, in squamous lung cancer, we know that FGF, fibroblast growth factor receptor, is, uh, is mutated or uh, there are increased copy number uh, variations in a, in a small percentage of patients, 10, 20 percent. So we're, we're finding those patients through a large uh, international study uh, in the U.S. and Canada, over 700 sites, and then those patients get an FGF receptor inhibitor. We're doing the same thing for uh, uh, CDK4-6 inhibitor, pavlocyclob being a drug that we're studying, or for PI3 kinase. So um, testing is important, and testing will help patients, and it will improve life and quality of life, some uh, uh, right now and others, of course, as we learn more and we do experimental trials. The typical genomic testing that we do for patients with non-squamous, uh, non-small cell lung cancer is a next generation sequencing panel. It typically involves uh, several hundred genes uh, where you characterize the mutations as well as the chromosomal rearrangements and copy number assessment of the tumors. We think it's important to do testing on patients at the time they develop metastatic disease. Uh, the times when we use the information for the standard treatment of patients with non-squamous, non-small cell lung cancer is at the time when they have disseminated disease. Uh, therefore, we typically take the tumors and then uh, do the testing. Now, at my own center and a large number of academic centers, they do those large next generation sequencing panels. As far as I'm concerned, the ones that are important to do in nearly any setting are those that would have an impact on the initial or subsequent therapy. And at the current time, those include EGFR, the epidermal growth factor receptor mutation testing, uh, ELK and ROS rearrangement testing, and now as it's emerging, testing for mutations in the BRAF gene. Uh, so at our institution, we routinely test uh, all uh, non-squamous, non-small cell patients for a number of actionable or potentially actionable mutations, one of which is BRAF. Uh, so I think it's important in the first-line setting at the time of initial diagnosis to have a very good understanding of the pathogenesis of the disease. And I think in 2016, that includes uh, a number of potential mutations or translocations that we know we have targeted agents for that are quite effective. The BRAF testing that we do at our institution includes not only the V600E mutations, for which there's currently drugs available, but also mutations throughout the kinase domain of that gene. Uh, we have the luxury of doing it in the next generation sequencing panel, so we get all that information. 
At the current time, it looks like there's only going to be a drug for the V600E mutants. So out in the community setting, it's likely that testing just for the V600E will be adequate for the moment.